there and welcome once again to the PCBSD YouTube channel. My name as always is Josh and today I've got an excellent video here for you on Pipelight and PCBSD. Uh, can it work? Does it work? Uh, why is it in the porch tree? Uh, that's one of the biggest questions I get is basically why do we have it in the porch tree if it doesn't work? Heck, the package for it doesn't even uh, build half the time is what I hear. Um, well, it's not entirely true that it doesn't work. Chris Moore of the PCBSD project actually uh, several months back, maybe even almost a year back, uh, built this port, got everything working. Um, only just a, maybe a, a few days after he got it working uh, to have the port die in a fit of rage. It just completely quit working for reasons unknown. And whatever we tried, no matter what we did, it just did not want to work for us. So. Um, we kind of honestly gave up at that point. Uh, we did put several weeks into it, but we just were not able to get it to uh, cooperate. So Chris did give up ownership of it at that point, and it's kind of just been lying in the porch tree for a while without much attention. Um, now there has been some recent attention, and I did notice that somebody uh, recently pushed up an update um, into uh, into the port, into the pipeline port. So that did kind of pique my interest, made me kind of wonder, well, uh, I wonder what he did there. I wonder if, um, you know, what he did maybe kind of tweaked some of the problems we were having. You know, what did he do and does it work now, quite frankly? So that's kind of why I decided to start playing with it again. Now, some of you may say, why the heck are you even worried about this? Um, well, that's a good question. Let me explain. You know, I've got a wife and kids. They are still very interested in watching Netflix on their laptops. Um, you know, that may seem a little bit archaic for those of you that have tablets, you know, cell phones, things like that, but we still do use uh, laptops and we do watch Netflix on them. And it's just another option for multimedia, you know, until uh, we have HTML5. Some of you will probably say, well, you know, what about HTML5? Isn't that an option? Well, at this point it really isn't. We don't have a solid Linux Chrome port yet. All right, and HTML5 theoretically would work in that with Netflix, but we don't have um, a solid one that's working to my understanding here. Chromium lacks the big bits and pieces that we need to make uh, the HTML5 playback work and it also doesn't work with Pipelight. So, um, Needless to say, that's not going to really do us a lot of good, which leaves us with Firefox as our other main contender uh, for a web browser. Now, Firefox um, on most systems does have the HTML5 playback, and they do actually have it um, in PCBSD and FreeBSD as well. You can see if you go on YouTube, you do have the option to have HTML5 playback. However, the problem is when it comes to Netflix, there is a little bit of a DRM dispute or at least there has been for a while and I'm no expert on this but I'll explain it to the best of my knowledge or the best of my understanding but uh, basically Netflix wants to have the DRM bits built in um, that will kind of manage the DRM for Netflix and Firefox is saying well no we need to have a toggle switch built in so the user can decide if they want to have those DRM bits turn on or off by default so that leaves us with a Firefox that works excellently, excellently, but uh, unfortunately it does not work with HTML5 in Netflix. So um, that is kind of a problem if you're wanting to use Netflix, needless to say. So that's kind of my reasoning here. You know, I've had a lot of people say, well, give it, give it another month or two, you know, give it a few months, give it a few months, you know, maybe it'll start working again. And, uh, you know, frankly, it's it's been a year now and so I thought, well, let's go ahead and play around with this, see if we can get it working now, That uh, especially since we had an individual commit a patch to the uh, ports tree. Now, before we get started, I want to give you guys a huge, huge disclaimer. This involves using Wine, Pipelight, and configuring advanced settings on your system. If you're not comfortable with doing this, then I'd highly, highly recommend trying it in a virtual machine first. We are providing this video for informational purposes only. If you, if you, for some reason, you install Wine for your, on your system and it ends up terribly confused, your system burns up in a fit of rage, basically all I'm saying is don't blame me, okay? Um, this is strictly free to play around with. If you want to, um, you know, kind of get involved, see if it works on your system, you know, nothing should go wrong. But as you probably know, when you're messing with administrative commands and... Uh, 
um, emulation and things of that nature, things can and most likely will go wrong and you will run into errors. So um, just keep that keep that in mind basically, okay? Um, at any rate, just keep in mind your mileage will vary. You will see several uh, several different errors in this video that uh, you will run into, but you may run into some other errors that are not shown in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and run sudo port snap fetch extract. There we go. And we're going to let this just run here for a minute. We're going to go ahead and grab the ports tree is basically what we're doing here. And this will take just a minute to complete. It depends on the speed of your connection, the speed of your computer, etc. I may just go ahead and cut the video here and just come right back in just a minute once this operation finishes. Okay, guys? Be right back. All right, there we go. It does look like our operation did complete and we did finish fetching the ports tree here. Okay, there we go. Now go ahead and cd over to the pipelight directory into slash user slash ports slash emulators slash pipelight. I'll just go ahead and do an ls here. Looks like I'm already in the directory, so we'll just make sure that everything's kosher here. Oh, something's not right. CD back. It looks like we're in a ghost directory, so I'm just going to CD over to that directory and make sure it puts me in the right place. There we go. Now we're in the right place here. Now, just so you guys know, uh, most of you probably already know this, but any commands that I'm going to use here in the video, I will go ahead and put below. Okay? So there will be a full list um, after the video completes, or if you want to just skip straight to that, you know, there will be a complete list below. Now, uh, I, I want you guys to go ahead and um, uh, we're going to run into an error here in just a minute, but I want you guys to go ahead and run a sudo make install and see what error we're going to run into. And we're going to run into more than just one. We're going to run into a few. And as we run into them, we're, I'm going to kind of show you guys uh, kind of the workarounds for them, okay? There we go. All right, now you see this uh, error right here? Um, there's a line, if you go up right there, where it says no checksum equals yes. Well, we don't exactly want to do that. Um, this is an easy, easy thing to fix, but we just want to fix the checksum error rather than uh, tell it to ignore the checksum. Okay, now if we get a port maintainer for this, I'm told that it's a simple thing for them just to go in and fix this, but considering how out of date this port probably is, um, that's not far-fetched uh, to, to consider that the uh, checksum is just probably out of date. So go ahead and run sudo make make sum and press enter. And there we are. After you do that, that will go ahead and the checksum will uh, now be okay for you. So you can run a sudo make install, okay? Now again, you're gonna hit an error here in just a minute. And my build is gonna go quite a bit faster than yours probably will because I pre-built all the dependencies, all right? But I did, uh, uh, this will replicate all the errors you should run into, okay? Now this issue here, this is an interesting one, okay? Uh, this one is more in regards to this line up just a few lines uh, where it says dash dash verify plugin loader, okay? Um, now this issue right here is more in regards to that we're not using a, a, like a GNOME type desktop. Those ones have a, a key manager, if you will, built in that can, it's a, a Linuxy way of verifying key signatures, which we just simply do not have, okay? Um, so that's not a huge issue. We just have to find a workaround to get it to build. Um, considering most people, well not most people, but I'll say a lot of people uh, may not have GNOME installed, you know, you will want to take note of this, okay? So the next thing that we are going to do now, let me briefly look over here at my notes. All right, the next thing I want you guys to do is run a sudo make install dash i. Now I would, I would love uh, for the verification check to work, 
but it's simply not going to work because I don't have GNOME installed, okay? So considering I don't, when I run the dash I flag, it is going to ignore that error. And we are at the very, very tail end of the build where it is literally just doing the verification check and then finishing. So there we go. Now after that's done, Pipelight is finished building from ports and you can see all this stuff right here uh, where the cursor is kind of uh, fluttering around. You can see that it does give you quite a bit of information that you can follow up on, but I am gonna uh, give you guys a complete walkthrough on how to set it up including these instructions so um, you know you don't have to pay too much attention to that right now unless you just want to try to do it yourself alright well now that that part is done we're ready to kind of move into phase two here alright uh, the first thing we're gonna need to do is create a UFS ZVOL basically for Pipelight to live on now this isn't as complicated as it may sound there's actually a script um, already in there that will do this for you. But basically what this does is it's just going to kind of help convince some of these websites that are very DRM centric uh, that you are on a very Windowsy or Macish system uh, that it likes a little bit more than you know our our uh, run-of-the-mill FreeBSD or PCBSD, alright? So uh, one thing you will want to go ahead and do is make sure you do run, run the rehash command before we proceed That'll just kind of help you out as we go on to grab some of these longer commands, okay? There we go. Great. Now that you've gone ahead and run the rehash command, the next thing we're going to want to do is run the pipelight-make UFS command with pseudo privileges, and then just go ahead and put your username there on the end of it, okay? and press enter. There. Oh, wait. Looks like I missed a dash in there. Yep, definitely missed a dash. Let's fix that and try again. There we are. Done and done. We now have a hidden pipelight directory inside our home directory that will store our various Pipelight and Silverlight related settings. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to want to do is run wine cfg right here from the terminal. Okay, so go ahead and click on your terminal over here and type that out and press enter. Do, 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 do. Just tab for the end of the command here. There we are. Give it just a moment. All right, and there we go. Now this is super easy. Right here where it says your Windows version, all you have to do is just uh, click on this right here where it says Windows, uh, Windows 7. The default is actually gonna be Windows XP normally, uh, but go ahead and set that for Windows 7. Click Apply, and then just hit OK. There and that part's done. That's really legitimately all you have to do for that part right there, okay? All right, now the next part we need to do is we need to go ahead and enable the Silverlight plugin. So we're gonna type in pipelight dash plugin space dash dash enable Silverlight 5.1 and then press enter. All right, and it says Silverlight 5.1 is now enabled. Excellent. Um, by the way, that is two dashes right there. If you guys can't see it real good, it looks a little blurred together on my screen, but that is two dashes, definitely. Okay. Now that Silverlight is enabled on the system here, on the back end, we need to go ahead and build the Mozilla plugins that will basically tell Mozilla Firefox that, um, that the Silverlight plugin is there. So go ahead and type sudo pipelight dash plugin dash dash create dash mozilla dash plugins and then press enter once you do that that will just put the uh, that will just put the library for pipelight inside of the mozilla home directory and then you should be in business there we go. 
All right, that's it for phase two. Now we go into the last part, and we should be starting to see some video here pretty soon. All right, we are almost there, guys. Thanks for sticking it out with me. Now we're going to hit an error here in just a second, so don't be alarmed when Firefox decides to not work. Before that, though, we need to install User Agent Overrider uh, for Firefox. It's just a little plugin that simply changes the user agent string to something that Netflix enjoys a little bit better than FreeBSD or PCBSD. So go ahead and open Firefox here. And this is all normal. This is great. It's creating the wine prefix. That's that's good. Looked like it was uh, enabling Silverlight. Yep, in the background. That's good. That is what we want right there. We'll just let that complete here for just a second. doesn't take long at all, it just takes a few seconds. There we are. And see, those are all done. Now, uh, to install the plugin, go over here and click on the three bars, a little drop down menu. Then click over here on add ons, get add ons. Over here in search add ons, just type in user agent and press enter. And it should be, I think it's this second one right here. Yeah, go ahead and click on this one. And then just press install. That should do the trick. It should have the uh, the string built right in. Yep, it sure does. This one right here, the Windows slash Firefox 29 is the one that ex that's exactly what we need. Um, you can see right here it's enabled because it's blue. If it's gray, it's disabled. So since it's blue, that's exactly what we want. So that is perfect. All right. So we'll just go over here to this tab. And we can go ahead and browse over to Netflix, I suppose, see if we can get it working. So this time, just go ahead and type in the web address right up here. And uh, this will require an account, so sorry guys, if you don't have an account, yes, you will have to get one or uh, subscribe at least for a month. Um, let's see here. All right, what show should I click on here? Uh, something family friendly, right? Uh, what's family friendly? Ah, here we go. Let's do this one over here. Oh, that's definitely not. Nope, nope. Yeah, here we go. How about this one? All right, so you know how I told you guys when you're messing with uh, emulation and administrative settings, sometimes things don't go exactly right? Well, I need to show you guys something right quick because there was something that did not go exactly right here, and I want to make sure you guys see it here. Now, if you look um, up above here, I did actually have to run the pipelight dash plugin dash dash enable silverlight dot five silverlight five dot one with pseudo privileges. Okay, and when I did that, I had to accept this license and then it did enable it. Okay, so um, now that we've done that, let's just go here to Netflix and see if that solved the problem. Uh, I figured rather than see, see me floundering on why uh, you know it wouldn't play, oh, and it's still not working, but I know why. We need to go back over here, and uh, since we did re enable the plugin, we need to uh, create the Mozilla plugins again. Okay, all right. Okay, this is great. This is actually exactly what we want. I know that may sound silly since it just crashed, but uh, this is an indication um, that it is trying to initialize Pipelight and the hardware acceleration is crashing, which is something we can fix. So uh, this is perfect. Um, I can show you guys what we're going to need to do next, so not a big deal, but do just make sure you do this part above uh, with pseudo privileges and then run the Create Mozilla Plugins. Uh, the pipelight plugin uh, with the create Mozilla plugins uh, flag. Okay, guys. As long as you do that, then you should be able to get to this next step, no problem. But I will include that uh, below in the uh, steps. Okay. Now let's see here. Let's click over here on our terminal, and we need to go ahead and browse to the configuration file for the Silverlight. Uh, 5.1, uh, basically for the configuration file for Silverlight 5.1 uh, for Pipelight. All right, so go ahead and sudo edit slash user slash local slash share slash Pipelight slash configs slash Pipelight dash Silverlight 5.1. I realize that's a mouthful, so again, look below for that long uh, that long entry. Okay. 
Now go ahead and scroll down here until we start seeing the hardware acceleration lines and I'm going to show you guys what we're looking for, okay? We're looking for... Ah, here we are. Overwrite arguments, okay? This is what we're looking for. Now this line right here that I have highlighted, this is the line right here that we want to go ahead and uncomment and then just put a little space there just to line it back up where it says enable GPU acceleration false. Now I don't know that this is necessary for every single video card, but for my NVIDIA GT740, um, it was definitely necessary. I have in the past gotten video acceleration to work with Pipelight, but that was a long, long time ago, so I can't speak for that now. Uh, the easiest way just for me to get it working now was just to go ahead and uncomment this line. And when I did that, I was able to get it working um, no problem. All right. So now that we've done that, press escape, A for leave editor, A for save changes, and there we are. All right, now that should have saved our changes there. So now that we have all of our configuration files saved, um, all of the Mozilla plugins should be saved. We should just be able to launch Firefox now. Let's just go ahead and close all these windows out, though, get them out of the way. Just go ahead and open Firefox see what we get when we go to Netflix and we'll just click over here on this one excellent now this is what we want we got the spinning bar now uh, it is important to keep in mind you guys may have a prompt right now that'll come up that says activate silverlight or activate uh, pipe light that is okay alright but as you can see the video is working fine Subtitles work fine. Excellent stuff, isn't it? So, uh, video works absolutely perfect uh, with Pipelight. Now, just a couple of things here, guys. Uh, I have been able to watch movies all the way through. Now, obviously, I don't watch them at work, but uh, I just kind of let them play in the background and run all the way through. Um, I don't usually get crashes. There are on occasion crashes, uh, I think, the other day. Um, I did have a crash about halfway through a movie, but it was like once during a two-hour movie. Um, so it's not perfect. Keep that in mind. Um, like I said earlier, your mileage may vary, but for the most part, in my experience, it works really, really well. So hopefully, uh, for those of you that just want to kind of check this out and see if you can make it work on FreeBSD and PCBSD, now you know uh, it can work and you can make it build from ports, even if it gives you a little bit of trouble. Uh, you may just have to give it a little TLC and a little extra bump. But uh, anyways, guys, hey, we, uh, I appreciate you hanging in there. I know this video ran long, and thank you guys so much for being part of the community. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.